the Hawaiian Kingdom was actually a functioning nation among nations, uh, recognized by all of the other nations of the world as a sovereign state or nation state. And um, there were some people, disgrunt disgruntled people within Hawaii uh, called the sugar planters. They were also the wealthiest people and had amassed a great amount of, of, of wealth uh, growing sugar and trading that sugar with the United States. So they uh, really conspired to, to think that if they could annex Hawaii to the United States and make Hawaii a part of the United States, then that would improve their uh, market uh, position within the United States. And they were also able to find uh, co-conspirators in the United States government, uh, primarily in the military, uh, saying that uh, Hawaii could offer the United States a very excellent uh, naval base called Pearl Harbor. And so the two powers conspired and they cooked up the scheme that if there was an overthrow of the uh, regime change in Hawaii and those that overthrew the government were to offer it to the United States, that the United States would, would gladly annex the Hawaiian Islands. So that was the basic scheme and that's what was pulled off. Now none of this of course was legal because the United, the United States had uh, treaties with the Hawaiian Kingdom, treaties of friendship and of respect for our sovereignty and things like that. So this was definitely an illegal action on the part of the United States to participate in what is now called regime change, to change over the regime of another country for the purpose of taking over that country. So that is actually a, a criminal um, uh, uh, endeavor on the part of a nation taking over another nation. Uh, but nevertheless, they went ahead with the scheme. The scheme was exposed early on and was shown to be uh, patently illegal. Uh, the, the first president of the United States who looked at the, the situation after the uh, overthrow had taken place uh, admitted that the United States had committed an act of uh, viola violations of international law uh, and possibly an act of war against a friendly nation. And so he recanted that and, and basically said that the United States cannot pursue annexation of a friendly nation without that nation's consent. Um, and uh, so, so he actually made an agreement with Queen Liliuokalani, who had been deposed, uh, but he made an agreement to restore her as the sovereign of the independent country of Hawaii. Uh, that agreement is actually in limbo right now. It has never been executed, although it was agreed upon. Uh, however, a few years later, when President uh, Cleveland, who made that agreement, was out of office, then the conspirators within the United States who wanted to take over Hawaii pushed again for annexation. By now, there was a provisional government in place and a, uh, what was called the Republic of Hawaii. There was a regime change in that they did create a, a new nation or out of scratch, out of nowhere, um, and created this Republic of Hawaii. So the Republic of, the, of Hawaii entered into an agreement with the United States to annex the Republic of Hawaii to the United States. Um, this was received by quite a, mem a few members of Congress. Quite, uh, uh, they were very receptive to it. They, had to, they would have had to approve it. But the Hawaiian people themselves, of course, protested and filed a very strong protest uh, where they took up uh, uh, a petition of Hawaiian nationals, those who are um, nationals of the Hawaiian Kingdom, and that they, over 90% of the uh, Hawaiian nationals signed that petition resisting or uh, opposing annexation to the United States. So when it finally got to the Congress of the United States, to the Senate, for ratification, it was, it was turned down because the, they did not have the consent of the people of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Um, and so Queen Liliuokalani, who had been in Washington lobbying against it, returned home quite victorious because we had defeated any treaty of annexation. Uh, within a year or so, in a few months' time, the United States had all provoked a war with Spain uh, to try to oust Spanish influence from the Western Hemisphere. And, and so 
<clears throat> the war began uh, against Spain and it, w it went very quickly. Uh, the, most of it was fought, fought in Manila and uh, Puerto Rico um, and uh, yeah, Cuba um, in uh, Havana. And, um, but the Manila part of it, which is in the Philippines, was the part that involved Hawaii. So the United States, in prosecuting their war with Spain in 1898, decided to go ahead and seize Hawaii to be used as a base. So they used a false, or a, a, the premise of uh, what is called a joint resolution of Congress to, uh, quote, acquire Hawaii as a, as a territory of the United States. Under the excuse of military necessity, meaning they needed the military base here, so therefore they would simply acquire Hawaii to be that military base. After the Spanish-American War, which was fairly short, um, then Spain then yielded and um, uh, signed over several of its territories to the United States, Hawaii not being one of them because Hawaii was an independent country. But the United States simply proceeded as if Hawaii were a part of the spoils of war and basically treated Hawaii as a territory acquired during the Spanish-American War uh, through their joint resolution. So none of this is lawful. Um, and the people of Hawaii protested that <clears throat> very <clears throat> quite strongly, but uh, those protests were overlooked. And um, the nations that we had treaties with failed to come to our aid to uh, stick up for the fact that Hawaii is still a sovereign nation. And so the United States simply subsumed the Hawaiian Kingdom as, as the Republic of Hawaii and then into the United States as a territory of Hawaii. Uh, and then embarked on a very strong Americanization of Hawaii at that point. So several genera generations later, they succeeded in practically wiping out any memory of Hawaii having been an independent nation on, on par with all the other nations.